So now you're touring, you do the music. Yeah, touring, doing the and music. one day you say, you know what? I'm going to open up a pizza parlor. Well, I always loved pizza. You know, growing up in Youngstown, there's a pizza parlor on every corner. Every corner and it's right. all good. You know, right, you, you right. know the food yeah. in Youngstown. Talk about Calamad. You know, Ala Capri yeah. has the best Calamad that I've ever had. Uh, but anyway, it was just a great way to grow up. And all the pizza was was great. I loved it. I loved the whole Sicilian tradition. My father passed when I was young, and that was the Irish side of me. But I didn't really know that side as much as I did the Sicilian side. So pizza was part of the deal, you know, Sunday gravy at Grandma's and all that. So I always had this romantic thing going with pizza. I love it. And then uh, as I started a tour, you'd get some shit pizza, and then you'd get some really great stuff. And we call it bus lobster because it shows up far too often. And uh, so I just started to think about it. And then I, what I f found out through investigation was there was so much cool stuff going on out there that I started to go to the pizza expo and really get into it and become familiar with the guys that were the top dogs. And that's kind of what precipitated this. And then, you know, part of getting older, as we said before, is you think in terms of a little bit more longevity and a legacy and it, you know, I'm probably not going to be as popular as, uh, you know, Mick Jagger in this lifetime. So what am I going to leave for my kids? And so it just kind of all melded together and I got interested in it and started doing it. And then the boys are in it. So it's just like a shoe in. And who did you get to help you teach how to make the pizza? The pizza? Stuff? I studied a lot with the guy, Tony Gemignani, I told you about. Uh, learned a lot from him. But I've gone everywhere. I've, I've studied with the Hunt brothers who teach a Detroit style. Not necessarily teach. These guys are not all necessarily instructors. But they all have a, a great amount of knowledge. Uh, Michael Lamarck in Cleveland, Ohio. Great pizza. Iola. There's just a ton of them. So I would go study with these guys because I'd meet them all on the road. Because I'm in these studies, cities. You would go with them and make a few pizzas. Yeah, and I go to their place. Yeah. I go to their place for a couple days and if they'll have me, I'll stand around and watch them make pizza. So I just kept going. What style are you going for right now? Who out of all the styles? Well, that's pizza? our thing. I, we're into a multiple style thing. So we do Sicilian, New York, Ohio, Detroit, uh, Neapolitan. So we're into this multiple style thing. And I thought I invented it. So <laughs> I'm looking around. Nobody's doing this because everybody wants the pizza that they grew up on. It's the best friggin' pizza on the planet. So I thought I was going to do that and invent it. And then I found this guy, Tony, and I approached him and said, hey, man, you stole my idea. And uh, we became friends because of that. And is, so I'm into the multiple style. Is Detroit good? I haven't I haven't tried it, but I, I've seen people been telling me about it recently. It's like a like a thick, kind of like crispy sort of. Yeah. It looks cool. I've never had it. It's amazing because it's, uh, you know, it's a medium thick crust, but it's got this caramelized cheddar cheese that comes down the sides and just like a toasted cheese sandwich. And then you got the mozzarella in the middle and then the racing stripes of the um, uh, sauce and everything. And then, of course, your, your toppings. But, man, it's just a great style. It's light. It's not heavy. Like, oh. you think it's going to be a big, heavy pizza. Sicilian can be, can possibly be. Uh, but it's not a weight. It's not Because it's not bad. If it's made properly, uh, it's highly digestible food. And it's not like a sinker in your stomach. That's why when you eat this cheap stuff, you're going to feel like shit. Uh, when you eat better pizza, it's prepared properly, you're going to feel fine. You'll be fine. Why do you think they ate a whole pizza in Italy? They sit down with a knife and fork and eat the pizza. And they ate a whole pizza, Neapolitan pizza, because it's so well-proofed and, you know, made digestible. So there's a lot to learn. You know, I love pizza. I know I'm, you do. I'm a man on the move. Come on. The problem I have here is you're a man on the move. And, you know, I'm going to go in. The guy's going to come up to me. I got to tell him what I want. He has to write it down, put it on a note. Then the pizza guy puts it in the oven. Then I go to my table and he brings me the pizza. I can't do that. You want to come back in the kitchen and cook it? No. I want the guy <laughs> that I give the money to to give me the fucking slice once and for all. Give me the slice. While I'm talking to him, he's yeah. going, what do you want? Two cheese. He's throwing them in and he's talking to the guy next to me. What do you want? Two cheese. What do you want with those two cheese? Yep. I want a large Coke. And some fucking uh, that's old snap. school, man. Ba 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 ba. He rings you up. He takes your fucking dish out. Rings this fucking guy mm -hmm. up, and he's on a timer. 
He's on a timer in his mind. And all right. of a sudden, he looks at yours, he pushes it over, pushes this one to the side, closes the oven, he goes, what do you think about those Knicks? Yeah. And then you tell him they suck dick, they cost me $100, <laughs> and then he turns around and he gives you your two fucking slices. Yeah. But I would go to a place in Hollywood where they had to give it to the fucking Mexican, and the Mexican had to run it back to the other Mexican, yeah. and then go back to Tijuana, yeah. and then they'd fucking walk it back. That's not a slice. A slice is on the move. If I come to buy a pizza, yeah, then I sit down. But when I come in here for a slice, get two fucking plastic dishes, put them together, yeah. put the slice and fold it and just give it to me. Right. Do not put it in a bag. If you put it in a bag, a tree died because you put it in a bag. <laughs> what are the chances of this pizza making it home? I'm 300 fucking pounds. What are the chances <laughs> of this fucking slice yeah. making it home? Yeah. Why are you giving me a fucking bag for <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> Gonna eat it right now. That's right. It's like sushi. Eat the damn thing. When I go eat the sushi oven. and I see people, I hey, can I take this home? Listen, come here. <laughs> go in the bathroom. There's Windex. Just drink that, because that's what happens when you bring sushi home. It's you made to eat right fucking there. The same. And I'm not saying a good fucking like if I go to a pizza place, if I come in, and he's making a fresh pizza, but there's a pie and it's got a fly on it, and it's kind of petrified. I go. Duh, 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 duh. Give me two of those, because I want the you one. You digging that? that? I, I want the one that coagulated over there. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the slice. That's the fresh the slice. one. Is delicious. Yeah. But the one that coagulated overnight. That's that right. That motherfucker's on fire. Oh yeah. And that I shit have, comes together. Usually, I don't eat. I don't eat pizza if I don't see an Italian. That's true. I'm very prejudiced against That's true. that. Don't mind, listen. If you're Arab, I love you. <laughs> Stick to hummus and and, and baklava. Okay. <laughs> I will never go in there and eat it. If you're yeah. Cuban. Stick to Cuban food. Don't yeah. let me see you fucking making pizza. When Authenticity I, means something. It right? means a lot yeah. to me. I, want, I don't care if you pick your nose or scratch your ass. I eat the slice. <laughs> if there's a hair in it, God bless you. I'll take it. God knows. <laughs> Give me another one. God knows what's in your system. What are we talking about here? Talking pizza. About pizza. No, uh, you, you don't eat it unless there's an Italian. But I, I just, something I used to eat, there's only one guy I broke the exception. When I was a kid, there was a guy named Nick. Nick's Pizza. He was a Greek Degenerate gambler. Oh, there's something about the East Coast. All of them are owned by Greeks, right? But this guy—this yeah. was in That's the seventies. He was the only Greek allowed in the fucking <laughs> county. <okay? laughs> That's when this was the seventies, when three <laughs> Italians would come busy and go, "Oh, your name ends with an S." Yeah, Sakonakonis. Yes. This is not happening no more. <laughs> Next time you sell a slice, we light the place on fire. Yeah, lose the S and have the O. Yeah, unless you make a partner in Italian. So it'll be Nick's and Joe's. It's something uh, serious. Like people would not go to your pizza place. What's the place we saw on the way over here? It was a uh, Middle Eastern and uh, pizza. Yeah, no, I don't go Italian, in. right? Was I got Middle nothing against Middle Eastern Italian, people, Italian. but stick to what you know. No, pick no, a flag. Make the kibbe. Make, you know, make, pick a flag. That's something that's yeah, indigenous. Pick, uh, you know. pick a flag. No, I mean, no, I'm no, lucky no. to get away with this last no, name, no. the Irish last name, but my mother's name is Jen. No, I could tell that you, you know. have the thing in you. Like, even my brother, when I went home, he goes, I went to the sushi place one day, and I asked him about Japan, and they said they didn't know nothing about Japan, and they were Koreans, and I never went back again. <laughs> I go, okay, I'm not the only one that feels this way. but Absolutely. Nick, Nick was a character. Nick would call me a spick to my face. He called everybody by that, and there was a kid who would buy a slice there and would go across the street to get a nice tea because it was a nickel cheaper. And Nick would run out and go, you fucking Jew, go fuck yourself. <laughs> he would yell at him. Yeah, and he'd put that. his Sicilian by the window. So we called it the Sicilian International Airport <laughs> because all the flies would come in and land. Oh. That was there. That oh, was their man, uh, that was their takeoff and runway. Yeah, that's where they would load up. You could see the other flies loading the guys. That's their up landing the pad is a nice and they would fly, pie. and there was a fan right by it, so the flies had to get off the pie and then go through the fan without getting their hot head chopped off. Greek drove Nick drove a hard bargain. Yeah, if you were a fly, he just weren't gonna walk in there and eat his pizza, but he kept the Sicilian by the window, and I'd always go, Nick, come on. Give me half price. There's been flies shitting on there all day. So oh. I'll take, fuck you, you fucking spick. <laughs> One night I went in there with quaaludes, and he stopped calling me spick. I was in there. Because like, you fed him. I was in there with two quaaludes, and my buddy threw a whole thing of crushed red pepper at him. Oh, shit. He, was, he, was, he had a beard, and he would call him uh, who many. He, my buddy had a beard, so he would call my Ayatollah Khomeini. And my buddy's like, I'm fucking Italian, all right? Stop with the Ayatollah. And he threw a fucking red pepper Jesus thing at him. Christ. Oh, we were, we were savages with Nick. And I remember I was like, I had puke all over my shirt, 
And every time he saw me after that, it was 1982, so he called me Balushi. <laughs> he would say, you're, you're going to die like Balushi. <laughs> you're going to die like Balushi. I used to sell him all the hot gold. Anytime we robbed gold, I would sell it to him, and he'd look at it, and he'd look at me. <laughs> Are you sure this is gold speak? Yes, it is. And he'd look at it, 14 got it. I give you fifty dollars, but he would take it and he put it in an apron, right behind the bathroom. And I would wait till he stock up, and then I'd ask him to use the bathroom. And I'd steal the jewelry back, <laughs> and then I'd wait a week and come back. Nick, resell him. And he'd look at yeah. me and look at the ring and say, "I know this ring." He, he would <laughs> sit there for an hour. I know this ring. That's that's recycling. Oh my God, we used to torture Nick. He would he was such a degenerate gambler. He would just close. Like if there was a, a, a race at the Meadowlands in the yeah. afternoon, close. Be back in one hour. You gotta go. And he would come right back. Now, when I went to shoot the Soprano movie in New York, we shot in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and the guys were like, we're going to this pizza place this afternoon. But before we could go, the father still runs it. It's like the best pizza in Brooklyn. It's been there for Oh, the forest. A hundred years, and yeah, the guy's the ninety years He's old. Still there, and he makes his own pizza. Does not let his sons touch the pizza. He makes the pizza. The son walks the slice <coughs> right out, or he he'll walk the pizza out from the kitchen. The sisters at the counter, and Dom DeMarco is still standing there. It takes so long to get a slice. You can wait two, three but hours. But I, I heard that there's times he has to take a nap. Oh, yeah. Because he's so old. <laughs> oh, he's so, got to be in his, like, 94, right. 95 94, now. 95. Yeah. So you'll go there, and the thing says close, and you'll see his two little feet <laughs> hanging from one of the benches. <laughs> he just decides to take a little you gotta nap. you got to go there, though. That's history. That's pizza I know. History. We were going to go, but they said it's closed. We only had an hour for lunch. It was a half hour drive. Oh, yeah. No, no, you got to wait. You gotta yeah, so we were already up there. It's not like I was making the trek from Manhattan to Brooklyn, which is no big deal. Yeah. But we were shooting a the movie. They were like, let's go to that pizza. It's a mile from here. And then the guy called back. He goes, it's closed. Oh, we went on the set at 7 in the morning. We had a 1 at a 2 o'clock lunch. How cool was it doing Sopranos? The movie? Yeah. The movie was uh, David Chase. That's cool. David Chase. Yeah, that's cool. Something out of this world. Yeah. I'm going to his birthday party next week. Are you really? Yeah, they invited me to his birthday party. Like his 80th or his 72nd Very or something. Very cool. Uh you play the bass, but you love music. I saw somewhere that you did something with Prince. You, yeah, you did some arrangements with Prince and whatnot. You know, it's really weird when you walk into the room, and I've never thought, I mean, in, my, in the back of my mind, for me to survive as a man, I have to think in, in my head, I got the biggest dick in the room, you know. When I was, as soon as he stood next to me, I knew his dick was two feet bigger than mine. <laughs> Gondolfini? No. I didn't do the Sopranos oh, okay. with Gandolfini. Oh, okay. I did the prequel movie. Oh, I guess I just shot it in May and April and June. But when you're with David Chase, you know that's where comedy ends. Like you strive that hopefully in 50 years mm -hmm. you'll get to that point. You know, musically. Like I know if how long have you been playing the bass for? Oh, forty some years. So forty some years. Think about it when you're playing the bass on your 60th anniversary. I could basically turn the lights off, strap the bass behind your leg, behind your neck, and you can play it like it's. That's what he is with comedy. Yeah, that's where he's at. You don't know that about him until you're around him, mm -hmm. and then you watch the series again, and you go, "Why wasn't?" Because me, I'm pushing for the line. He's not giving you that line. He's making you watch the visual to make it funny. He's making you work. And He's making it. you work. Last yeah. week I went home. This night I go home and I go on write. And I'll throw on HBO to go and put on The Sopranos. And there was an episode last week when Junior's at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he sees the chick. The old lady from the neighborhood. Chickie's wife. And he walks up. But he's supposed to sit in a chair. And he goes, I'm not sitting in a chair. I'm standing. Oh, of course, yes. And all of a sudden some big black guy came out. And he goes, Mr. Yeah. Soprano. And he goes like this with his voice. He could have said a thousand things. But David Chase saw the humor and him just looking at the black guy, looking at the girl, taking two steps back and just sitting down and going. Like in his mind, he told you, look at the fucking balls on this young. Yeah. Telling me to sit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But he won't tell you that. 
you know, he that's lets it what, unfold. That's what we've forgotten mm-hmm. in the night in the two thousands. We've forgotten your mind filling in blanks for movies. We give you everything with a movie now. When you watch The Exorcist, <coughs> it fucks with your mind. It lets your mind work. The directors used to make your mind work. Now you got a camera, you're a director. Yeah. That's, That's not true. what a director does. It's the same thing in music. It's the same. Right. So yeah. when, when you get around, I can't imagine being around Inspector Cluzo. Who played Inspector Cluzo oh, when we were clipped? Peter Sellers. Yeah, he's the while, correct While one. he was shooting the Pink Panther, if you weren't there taking notes, you know, uh, when I see planes, trains, and automobiles, I don't, John Candy stole the movie, but if from a comedian standpoint, it was Steve Martin. Because he had to learn how to tame himself down to let this guy run. You're not going to out-funny him, Steve. So knock that off. This guy could out-funny you in a heartbeat. But he took his comedy and showed it to you in a different way. Right. You know what I'm in the mood to watch lately? What's that? Tomorrow night, My Blue Heaven. Oh, I haven't seen that in a long that. time. You my, watch? My mom, when my mom was here, we watched that movie. How great is that movie? It's pretty. I, I'm, I, it was, uh, I never heard of it, but oh it's my pretty God. great. Remember, you married her. Yeah. It probably didn't get a lot of notoriety, did it? I don't know what year it came out, but it was just, it just didn't do it. Yeah. To me, those are comedy masterpieces. When I saw Eddie Murphy Delirious, I knew that was a comedy. When I saw Dice Clay special, I, I knew love it was Dice. special. You know, it's it's really weird to be around those guys. Like it is if when Emerson Palmer walked in. And, yeah. Or, you know, when, uh, what would happen when B.B. King walks in? He looks at you and he goes, tune in an A. Yeah. And you're standing there going, Tune in A. I'm about to fucking shit my pants and puke. <laughs> this is BB B. King in the fucking room. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> you're sitting with that's one just of the to godly let you like know. People, yeah. yeah, like what you said, you know, Jack White, whatever. You're just happy to fucking see these people. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. Uh, I never liked Roger Waters. I know his fucking ego overpowered. We spoke about ego on Monday. I don't like ego. I don't like I don't, I don't fucking deal with it. ego. I don't care what it is. I never Who liked you are. the fucking ego on the other prick that broke up. Because uh, he broke up Pink Floyd. And the other fuckhead broke up the police. That fucking oh, sting. Sting. That ego of a <laughs> cocksucker. You know. <laughs> you know, all those egos have always fucking killed me. Those egos will screw up everything, man. But now with music, it doesn't seem like the egos are there no more. These people are just happy to be up there. Whether it's Pat, whether it's Leonard Skinner, whether it's, uh, you know, I, I speak to Rudy a lot. Rudy goes on the road with uh, Loving Spoonful or one of those. Rudy Grand does? Funk Railroad. Oh, yeah. Grand Funk? Is one he playing with Grand Funk? Yeah, one of those. Oh, He's, that's cool. You know, last year it was uh, uh, the band from Seattle. Not Soundgarden, not Nirvana, not the other one. The other one. Who's the other one from Seattle? Uh, I will land you close to you. Uh, I will help you see it through. They, when I silent lucidity... Dun, is it? Dun, dun. We're all drawn a Put on silent lucidity. I forget the name of the band. He played with them for a couple of tours. You know, he he's was, a busy guy. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a working 70s. musician. Is he really? He's got to be 67, mm-hmm. 70. Okay. I guess we're all getting older. Right? You know, he's got a radio show, the music, you know. So Queenshire? Queen, Queensryche. Oh, Queensryche. Queensryche. Yeah. So I know he was on road with Queensryche. He does the. It's amazing how. You're not that distant anymore as a musician. When you and I were growing up, Led Zeppelin was a year away. They were a pond away. We live in a, a world today where if we try hard enough, Jimmy Page just might answer you back on Twitter. You never know. Or Dave Gilmore just might answer you back on Twitter. Or, you know. Or Joey Diaz. Or Joey Diaz. <laughs> or fucking Mick. Where'd I meet you? At church. Church, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody. <laughs> He did an error. I knew a second ago, but no. <laughs> keep, keep going from where you told it. Then... Okay. <laughs> you know that little forehead you got? 